This is David with The Verge, and this is the iPhone 5S. This is Apple's flagship phone, but it's the mid-cycle version. Like the 4S and 3GS before it, this device comes with a bunch of changes and improvements, but no huge design refresh. On the plus side, at least this year, unlike with the 4S, people will know you bought a new phone. Yes, the 5S is the same brushed aluminum shell and chamfered edges as ever, as light and thin and comfortable in one hand as ever. I do wish there were an option with a slightly bigger screen, but overall, it's still hard to beat the design and construction of the iPhone 5S. But it has new color options, which give it a great new look. There's silver, the same color you can get on the 5, but now there's also space gray, a slightly lighter version of last year's model that I actually like better. And then there's gold, the surprising new entrant. It looks great. The only other design change is on the front of the 5S, where Apple has redesigned the home button you'll press countless times every day. Now there's a ring around the button that matches the color of your phone. It's designed so that the iPhone 5S can read your fingerprint, which enables easily the most innovative feature on the 5S, Touch ID. Basically, Touch ID replaces your iTunes password and your device PIN, requiring only that you tap on the button with your finger. It'll recognize up to five different fingers so you and your family can all use your phone, and it's virtually instantaneous. It can be finicky at first while it gets to know all the different ways and angles you might touch the phone to turn it on, but it pretty quickly starts to work perfectly as long as you really do put your finger on there. The 5S runs on Apple's new A7 processor, which comes with the M7 coprocessor. The M7 takes inputs from the compass, accelerometer, and other sensors, and together they let the phone tell when you're driving, or when the phone's idle, or when you get out of the car and start walking. The A7 itself is kind of the same story. It's good now, but there's really nothing to do with all the power it offers. iOS 7 works great on the device, even smoother and faster than on the iPhone 5, but it's not a massive difference. All our benchmarks and tests, though, say it's remarkably faster, and I think the problem is that we're just not seeing very many apps that make use of its power or its 64-bit architecture yet. The big question with the 5S is whether or not you should upgrade from the iPhone 5. If you have a 4S or earlier, of course you should upgrade. But if you have a 5 and you care about taking pictures, you probably should as well. The 8 megapixel camera on the iPhone 5S is fantastic. It's the same megapixel count as the iPhone 5, but the aperture is faster, and more importantly, the sensor is bigger, which means individual pixels capture more light. That makes the iPhone 5S a much better camera when lighting is bad. The A7 processor also lets you use image stabilization in your photos, zoom in and out while you're shooting videos, and best of all, shoot slow motion video. It shoots at 120 frames per second at 720p, then plays back at 30 frames per second, giving you an awesome run from normal speed to slow motion and back again. The processor also makes for better photos just because it's able to shoot so many more of them. The phone captures 10 frames per second, and if you ask it to, it will automatically choose the best one for you, though I wound up just picking myself a lot. Regardless, using burst mode is really easy and a great failsafe if you want to make sure you always get the right shot. So is the True Tone flash, but I almost never use that. It uses two different colored flashes to light your subject better and match the scene around you, and it's definitely better than most flashes, but it's still a lot worse than just not using a flash. Battery was the one slight disappointment in the 5S upgrade. That's not to say it's bad. It's not. It's not even worse. It's just not meaningfully better than the iPhone 5. You'll get a full day as long as you don't use it constantly, but nothing more. The iPhone 5S starts at $199 for 16 gigabytes of storage, and it's the best iPhone ever. But of course it is. There are plenty of cool features here, but Apple and developers both need to work to get the most out of the A7, the M7, and even from your fingerprint. And for those still wanting a bigger screen, there are plenty of alternatives like the HTC One and the Moto X that the 5S doesn't exactly leave in the dust. I like the iPhone 5S a lot, and it's still probably the best overall smartphone on the market, but the best may still be yet to come. 